I'd like you to think of your age and hold that thought. Now, I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. You're not 12, 20, 40, or 70 years old. But you, my friend, are 13.7 billion years old, which is the age of a universe. From the molecules that make up your body, from the molecules that make up your body, to the thoughts that you currently adhere to, took the universe an inordinate amount of time while the processes of natural and notion selection. As the philosopher Alan Watts put it, you are what the whole show is doing in the place we call here and now. And every single one of us is an aperture through which the universe contemplates itself. Hmm. But who is this you? Are you your thoughts? Your actions? What do you know? The work you do? If so, who would it be if all of them were taken away? Five-year-old me and the person who I am today would have hardly anything in common, but we are still Ankit. I believe it is this question of who you are beyond labels that's going to define this century and goes into the heart of what it means to be conscious. Artificial intelligence, my subject, I believe is a medium through which we might be begin to explore the answer. However, before we get into that, let's ask the question, what is AI? Here's an analogy. It's been mankind's dream to be able to fly. During the olden times, people tried to realize their dream by imitating the only flying creature they knew well, birds. They created contraptions that were bird-like, and we have lost many a brave man to those wild pursuits. However, everything changed when the Wright brothers stopped trying to imitate birds and started experimenting with wind tunnels and learning about aerodynamics using Pascal's laws. For you see, once the principles governing flight were known, we could build machines that could travel faster than the speed of sound, and that could take us to outer space which is a feat which no bird can do. Artificial intelligence tries to do for intelligence what a plane does for flight. Last semester, I had a revelation which shook the core of my beliefs towards my subject. Somewhere in the middle of my daydream during a lecture, I realized that computer science is in fact a humanities discipline for you see, every program is nothing but taking a perception and freezing it as code. And this perception depends on the person who wrote the code. Hence, although the tools which you're using are scientific, every program is subjective and open to interpretation. AI is often considered the holy grail of computer science, and it tries to find a general program which fits all perceptions, and this goes back to the idea of who you are beyond your thoughts and body. For you see, we are all I, you are all you. Discovering that self is imperative for thriving in a world without jobs and unlimited possibilities to create. Because everything you create in such a world will be a reflection of who you truly are. We can still see a bit of Steve Jobs in every iPhone. Who in the audience has ever been concerned about a scenario where the machines become smarter than us and trap us all inside cages and zoos? Can I get a show of hands, please? Hmm. <laughs> That's a majority. <laughs> Whenever we speak about AI, this is the most common concern that crops up. I guess pop popular culture has primed us to look at this issue in that light. However, here's my take on it. To be able to create something smarter than you, you need to understand what smartness is. Once you have done that, and the moment you create something smarter, you have already merged with it, like Asher's hands. So you see, there's no such thing such as smarter than us. It's we who are collectively becoming smarter 
pushing the boundaries of intelligence and making the universe mature in the process. Thank you. Thank you.